Most people are familiar with how to use the through the lens detector, the TLD, to get a secondary electron image. Here I'll show you how to use it to get a backscatter electron image that will show atomic number contrast. So from the detector page, currently I've selected the TLD and secondary electron mode. That puts a 50 volt bias on the suction tube, which sets us up to accept low energy secondary electrons that will give us a topographically contrasted image. Here you can see I'm in immersion mode. We'll get the best atomic number contrast backscatter image in immersion mode. We can also try in field free mode. It'll give us atomic number contrast, just not quite as well. So here we see our secondary electron image. Um, and this is a patch of silver. I've heated the specimen to center these particles so that we get high roughness. Our brightest pixels, therefore, are associated with the highest roughness because we're getting topographical information. If I switch from a secondary electron to a backscatter electron mode, we're changing from positive 50 to negative 50 volts on our suction tube, and in doing so, we now reject low energy secondary electrons and only accept higher energy backscatter electrons that carry with them atomic number contrast information. If I go to a longer dwell time, we get a better signal to noise ratio, and now I see that the brightest pixels are now associated with the highest atomic number, gold, followed by silver, titanium, and silicon. The settings matter, so I have 3 kV right now, and that's to ensure that my backscatter signal is coming from only about the top 10 to 15 nanometers of my specimen. Each of these pads is about 20 to 30 nanometers deep, so I want to keep my signal coming from the depths of those pads and not the substrate below. We have a high current here also, 0.27 nanoamps. It's higher than you'd have for a secondary electron image, but we need that extra signal because backscatter electrons are more rare, and so we need to produce more of them with a higher current. In addition to secondary and, elect and backscatter electron mode, we have other modes. Downhole visibility changes to a 100 volt bias, and we can use that if we have any holes or any other crevices on our sample. We can, with a higher voltage than the 50 volts for secondary electron mode, we can extract signal from those, the depths of those holes. We also have something called charge reduction that puts a zero volt bias on our specimen. And if you have a non-conductive specimen that has drifting issues, sometimes this can help mitigate the drifting so that you can take a long dwell time image. Uh, finally, we have a custom mode. So in custom mode, we can move the suction tube voltage slide bar. So if I turn it up, we accept more signal and we're in more of a secondary electron domain. If I slide it negative, then we're back to our backscatter electron domain. Uh, you can use this if your charge reduction mode, zero volts, isn't reducing drifting. You should be able to use the custom voltage to find uh, an equilibrium for your sample where we're pulling off a certain amount of signal and by doing so we can get equilibrium charge on your sample surface and reduce the drifting of the specimen. So that's how to use all the different modes with the TLD.